is a constant quest to find a balance between nature and agriculture, trying to prevent the reality of industry encroaching on wildlife. And this dilemma also exists in the world of wine. How can a vineyard survive without eventually destroying the nature within it? I'm here at the Floral Cape on the southwestern tip of South Africa to visit a winery which is trying to do just that. If settlers came to South Africa today, they wouldn't dream of putting a bland monoculture like vines into what's the world's most complex environment. They simply wouldn't do it. But there are some winemakers who are trying to find a balance between making wine and South Africa's unique environment. Located on a private nature reserve in the Breed River Valley is Graham Beck Winery. Their aim is to make great wine while preserving the surrounding ecosystem. Graham Beck Vineyards has a rule. For every one hectare that's farmed here, at least four more are preserved for the wider habitat. Dedicated gamekeeper and conservation manager Mossy Basson oversees the game reserve, helping to protect the winery's vines and preserve the wildlife. When you come to work in the morning, are you coming to work at a winery or in a game reserve? I, I just come to work in, in nature. I'm coming to learn here. Yeah. I think that's, that's my main focus in life. Learn and, and trying to figure out how can we steer our operations in such a way that, that we maintain the flow of nature in this area. But of course, learning a lot about wine, learning a lot about the growing of grapes, and then also trying to figure out how can we make that process more sustainable. But it's always nice to meet somebody who, clearly, the job is their life's work, it's your passion. But it is one hell of an office to come and work at. Mossy's office extends over 2,148 hectares of natural, undisturbed wilderness. This must be a habitat for all sorts of species of animals. Yes, definitely in our, our big five, elephant, rhino, lion, and those sort of things, yes, we do have quite a healthy population of leopards, not just on the reserve, but also in the area. I put up some camera traps two weeks ago, and I would like to go and have a look at and see if we got any footage. The camera traps are activated by motion detectors, capturing footage of the wildlife. Is there a conservation purpose for taking the photographs? It's a monitoring thing, so that you can at least know what is moving around, yeah? Yeah. You can also concentrate on leopards, like we've done in the past. Or um, I've concentrated on some of our otters as well, our Cape Crawless otters in, in the river system. As the reserve is such a vast area, these camera traps help Mossy keep tabs on any wildlife that could harm the vineyard. This is exciting. Wow. That's... That's, that's leopard. A leopard? Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? It's really close to the camera. Yeah. This must be very exciting when you find yeah. these on the camera. Yeah. Baboons. Oh, a baboon. <laughs> yeah. An unmistakable baboon on its way to pick yeah. grapes, I suspect. The baboons on the reserve sleep in the hills beside the vineyard. The problem is that the grapes are at their best, really in the driest, driest season. So there's not a lot of food available out there. And therefore, this is like a shopping mall for them. And Mossy has set camera traps close to the vines to show what an attraction a free lunch can be to a hungry baboon. How destructive are they? I think if you just leave them, they, they, they could really destroy a vineyard. But we, we try and sort of deter them. So we've got the guy on the bicycle. And he's got a white flag on his bicycle. And then we've got the white flags all along the post here as well, all along the fence. And that sort of confuses the guys a little bit because they, they never know, is it now the guy on the bicycle or is it the flag? So they, they, they tend to stay away. So this is his job? He, he'll cycle around? This and... is his job. He'll, he'll just patrol this fence the whole day and keep an eye on the baboon. Hello, Gershwin. How's it going? <laughs> How are you? Have we seen any baboons today? No. Not yet. How do you feel about the baboons? Do you like them or, or do you find them difficult to deal with? 
they watch me. When I go that side, I come here then, they are here. But when the time I was here, there was no one. You want to have a go on the bike? I think I've come this far, I have yeah, to have a go. Yeah, Can I borrow your bike, yeah. Gershwin? Yeah. Right, have you any tips? Is there anything I should do? Keep a good presence. Keep a good presence, I'm going to... Yeah. I will ring, and I'll give you a shout yeah. if I see any and I get worried. Here we go. Right. This is pretty cool cycling, because it's rather like going on a nature safari. Not that I've seen an awful lot of nature, and I'm concerned that somewhere over there, all the baboons are very cleverly going, that guy's just cycling up the same bit. So we're going to go across and eat loads and loads of grapes, in which case I'll get into terrible trouble for being the world's worst baboon patrolman. I'm enjoying this very much. The views are extraordinary. As annoying as they can be, baboons are still part of the ecosystem and do help stop other wildlife invading the vineyard simply by being here. The game reserve is a lovely project, but this is a winery. Actually, it's a very serious winery. Graham Beck made the sparkling wine that was served at Nelson Mandela's inauguration in 1994. And as a result, it also made the wine that Barack Obama had served when he was nominated to run for president. So this is more than just a woolly PR stunt. This is integral to what they do here. But does Graham Beck's philosophy make it all the way from the reserve, through the vineyard and into the bottle? Cellar master Erica Obermeyer can hopefully tell me more. As a wine person, it's nice that it's made in the middle of a game reserve, but does it make a difference to you that you can improve that wine because of the game reserve and, and the biodiversity around your winemaking? I certainly think so, yes, because being so close to the game reserve actually makes you think a lot more about the wine. So by spraying pesticides, you'll actually think twice um, because you see the animals and you see the insects. So, yes. It's easy for wine producers to put planet first on the side of a Jeep or to put pictures of rare animals on their labels. What's much harder is for wine producers to turn that into something tangible, to live those values every day. As a wine lover and as a journalist, it's easy for me to say I prefer one wine to another or to say one wine offers great value. What's harder is to explain how those wines have an impact on the wider environment. And that's perhaps why I arrived here with a tinge of scepticism. But what Graham Beck is doing is very real, and spending time with Mossy and Gershwin has shown me that it's possible to find a balance between making great wine and preserving nature. How wine production has an impact on the environment is important, and it's a responsibility that we all share.